One of the many reasons commercial real estate is so profitable is the ability to take advantage of depreciation. As buildings wear out over time, the IRS allows owners of investment properties to deduct a certain amount of their income every year before tax is applied as a depreciation expense. Since this is an imaginary or paper expense and that you're technically not paying for it out of pocket, the more you claim in depreciation, the more you can walk away with after taxes. Cost segregation is a common way of trying to maximize the amount of depreciation expense you can claim by speeding up the abstract decline in property value. Let's take a look at how that plays out. How depreciation on a commercial property is calculated. There are a couple of different ways that you can track depreciation, but the simplest is to just find how long it will take the asset to completely fall apart, also known as its useful life, and then divide how much you paid for it by that many years. This method is called straight line depreciation, as you end up claiming the same amount every year in depreciation expense. The IRS has set rules for the length of time to use for different items in these calculations, with single and multifamily rentals expected to last 27 and a half years, and commercial properties expected to last 39 years. Now, don't be too quick to just take the sale price and divide it by 39 years, though. Normally, when you buy a property, you purchase both the building and the land it sits on. And while the building can be depreciated, the IRS has stated that land cannot be. So you'll have to split that purchase price into two components. One you claim you paid for the land and the other you paid for the building. Once you have a number for the value of the building, you can now divide that by 39 years to come up with your annual depreciation expense. Now for how cost segregation works. The term cost segregation sounds complex, but the good news is that it works in the exact same way. Since the IRS has different timelines for how long different things will last, it is often beneficial to take the portion of the sales price you paid for the building and split it up even further. And our price divided by timeline equation, as the total lifetime an item is expensed over decreases, the annual depreciation expense goes up. So by redefining which IRS category something falls into, you can potentially claim it has a shorter lifetime and speed up the amount you expense in the early years of ownership. Hence the more common name, accelerated depreciation. And remember, since this expense is a paper loss, the higher you can make it, the more income you can keep from being taxed. Ultimately, how quickly you can benefit from depreciation comes down to how much of your property falls into each of the IRS's four different categories. Number one, personal property that you have a hand in choosing, like a bathroom fixture or carpeting, can be expensed over five or seven years. Number two, improvements to the land, such as sidewalks or fencing, can be expensed over 15 years. Number three, the building is expensed over 39 years if it is commercial or 27 and a half years if it is residential. And number four, the land, which is not expensed at all. The boundaries and definitions on where things fit can sometimes be vague, making it absolutely critical that you hire experienced professionals to conduct what is called a cost segregation study on your property, rather than trying to figure it out yourself. Usually the ones conducting the study will have a team made up of accountants, lawyers, and engineers who work together to decide which things should go into each category. Now for an example of cost segregation. Cost segregation can be a very powerful tool for real estate investors, so let's take a look at an example. Rachel invests in an office building that she plans to sell in five years and pays $900,000 altogether to the seller. She talks with her accountant and they decide that the land value is worth $100,000. Rachel divides the remaining $800,000 over 39 years, it's commercial property, to come up with a rough depreciation expense of $20,000 per year. This means when she sells in five years, the total value she will have kept from paying taxes on is around $100,000. Rachel really wants to increase her depreciation expense so she doesn't have to pay as much in taxes, so she reaches out to a local firm that she heard does cost segregation studies. After completing their analysis, they tell her that she can claim that a quarter of the $800,000 was used to pay for the interior fixtures and finishes. As personal property, this can be depreciated over five years instead of 39. Rachel now does the math to see how much that will change her total depreciation expense over the five years before she sells. With this new information, she divides the first $200,000 over five years and the other $600,000 over 39 years. She then comes up with $40,000 per year for the interior fixtures and finishes and roughly $15,000 per year for the building for a total of $55,000 per year in depreciation expense for the first five years the property is owned. 
she can now shield $275,000 from taxes, which is a sharp increase. This example may be a bit exaggerated, but it demonstrates the core concepts of cost segregation. Split the property value into different IRS categories, assign each the right timeline, and benefit from the accelerated expense schedule. So who should cost segregate? Cost segregation studies typically occur as a property is being purchased or directly after to give the buyer the correct information for their financial records from the start. After this point, the process of keeping things organized is relatively simple as things are worn out and replaced. In the above example, you may have noticed that the only thing that changed was the timing, as either way, the full amount of depreciation expense would have been the same at the end of 39 years. However, even if you are holding a property for more than 39 years, cost segregation can still provide value by freeing up those tax savings sooner and giving you the opportunity to invest that capital into other projects. The major limiting factor, however, is pricing. A general recommendation is to look into getting one for property acquisitions that cost more than $750,000, but cost segregation studies do tend to be expensive and are charged on a flat fee basis. As with most things in commercial real estate, it really comes down to each individual property owner's unique circumstances and financial situation. So it's best for any commercial real estate investor to consult a CPA or cost segregation specialist for their investment properties. Okay, now that you've learned the tax advantages of doing a cost segregation study on your property, check out this video here where I show you how to save your capital by using a 1031 exchange next time you sell a property. I'll see you there.